Hello, Mr. Bill Poker Peeps. Welcome to the vlog. Uh, sorry that I have had so few vlogs that I've been so late. Uh, it's been kind of busy. <laughs> On this vlog, I'd really like to convey uh, four things um, since my World Series. Number one is just that you guys that watch my vlog and support me and see me at the World Series or in Cleveland or at Windstar are just awesome. I appreciate so much the positive words, the support, uh, both in words and uh, financially in this last one. Number two, the World Series of Poker is a tremendous grind. It, it takes a toll both physically and mentally. Number three, not to be too negative, but there are some people out there who are not happy unless they make everybody else miserable. Trolls, haters, and it's really just uh, ridiculous. And number four, we're gonna talk about my results. So first of all, you guys, I would have given up this vlog long, long ago had it not been for the reaction I get from people for the positive words and encouragement I get from people everywhere I go. Hey, Mr. Bill, we like your vlog. Thank you for doing it. Uh, I got backed by a number of you for the World Series of Poker main event, which is just awesome. So, so uh, generous of you guys to back me. Um, and like I said, everywhere I go, whether it's at the Jack Casino or Windstar or at the World Series of Poker, I get people to come up to me and just tell me kind words, buy me a beer. I've had numerous people buy me dinner. Uh, it's just very, very nice. Again, I would not be doing this anymore if it weren't for the positive and kind words and the support I get from you guys. So I've had a number of people, mostly at my work, who are not, they're not poker people, and they'll ask me, hey, did you have fun at the World Series? And the answer is absolutely no, I did not have fun. <laughs> Now that doesn't mean that the World Series poker wasn't enjoyable. Of course it was enjoyable because of the tremendous amount of competition. It just energizes me, it gets me going. I love the competition, but fun is different. Um, man, we're playing 14 hours a day. It's a mental grind, it's a physical grind. I don't eat right, I don't sleep right. I don't sleep because I get home from playing for 14 hours and my mind is going. Uh, I want, I'm thinking about what could I have done better? What could I have done different? So you don't get a whole lot of sleep. But it's just a tremendous grind to be in the World Series of Poker and be there for three weeks like my son and I were. Um, again, enjoyable is one thing. Fun is a whole completely different thing. Now, with that said, I did have some great laughs with people. Uh, again, meeting people was just awesome. Uh, got to have some nice dinners. Uh, we had beers a few nights and things like that. That was fun. Uh, but the actual playing and grinding, not fun. Energizing because of the competition. So not only is it a grind, it is, you're just asking for pain to play in tournaments, right? Uh, Billy saw a guy that was wearing a sign around the, his neck that said, kick me in the nuts for $20. And me and Billy laughed and said, geez, it seems like that we've had that sign around our neck the entire time we've been playing at the World Series of Poker. Maybe you guys can relate. There's second guessing yourself. There's stress. There's burnout. Man, burnout is real, people. <laughs> playing that many tournaments that much time uh, in a single day. And then of course, then to have the pain of, for example, I bubbled two tournaments. There's nothing like that pain. I guess there is, uh, but it is painful when you are a poker player and you bubble, especially in big time events like that. You guys may or may not know this, but there are people out there who are not happy unless they spread their misery. There's trolls, there's haters, there's people who know zero about me that say just awful, terrible, ugly things about me. Um, I hate to let them win, but they are dragging me down a little bit. Uh, eventually they won't win, and I'll keep doing this, and I will um, make content for the guys who really appreciate it. But man, in the short term, those guys are bringing me down. 
I had one guy actually write a comment that said, I have tainted the entire poker community and world by asking for money from being a vlogger. Really? So I have that much power. I have that much um, influence over the poker community. Buddy, get a life, man. Oh, sorry. I hate to come off bitter, but those guys make me a little bitter. So anyhow, that was the third thing. Again, I don't want this blog to be negative because mostly I'm so thrilled to death with the people who do support me, but I want to let you guys know where I stand on the other because it is a, definitely a drag. So we're going to go over results, but before we go over the results, we're going to go over some hands. So a couple of things about the main event. Uh, I had played in the main event uh, previously in 2014 uh, when I had some had some really big caches that year. Um, I only made it to the early parts of day two on that year, and so this was a chance for me to redeem myself. Those of you who watch my vlog know that Billy got to play in the main event this year and had a 100% back. I was unsure if I was going to play, and of course I asked for backing, did a video. So I decided I'd fly out July 5th. I knew I was going to late reg if I played anyways. Flights from Dallas to Las Vegas were not good. So in, anyhow, my wife and I decided to fly out July 5th, early, early morning. We flew to LAX. The flights from LAX to Las Vegas were wide open. So we decided to get on one of those flights. Oh, then they canceled the flights. Not a good. So that was at about 12 o'clock noon. We decided to rent a car and we drove to Las Vegas. It's only four hours. So it really wasn't so bad, except for Los Angeles. Holy cow, you people who live in Los Angeles, I don't know how you can do it. It's a four hour drive from the airport to Las Vegas and two hours was simply trying to get out of LA. Oh my gosh, what a mess. Anyhow, during the drive, I was communicating with some of my friends and some of my people who might back me and I got a number of backers. So I got enough to play in the main event, as you guys now know. Series of Poker 2019 main event, about to register, uh, they were in level four right now. So we're playing level four, I played maybe 10 or 15 minutes, had not even played a hand yet, and then the earthquake, holy cow, and there was really pretty much two reactions to the earthquake. There was one reaction was people just running and screaming and getting the heck out, that was my wife. <laughs> Then there was the other reaction from many, many, many of the people who was, deal the card, let's go, let's play the next hand. <laughs> but it was interesting. I was in the Amazon room uh, where they film for, you know, uh, Poker Go, ESPN, that kind of stuff. And the chandeliers were absolutely just swaying back and forth. It was a 7.1, that's a pretty good size earthquake so anyhow they stopped the tournament they had us go to break early so i played for 15 minutes i don't think i played a single hand and then we had an earthquake break finally getting back to day one and i did have some interesting hands all right the first interesting hand that came at the 300 500 500 level uh there's a very very wide opener in mp2 uh he makes it 1300 i have 57,000 um with pocket kings so I raise it up to 4,000 and he's the only one that makes the call. The flop with 9,300 of the pot comes 489. Uh, he checks, I make it 2,500, relatively small. He makes the call. The turn is a 10. Uh, it goes check, check. Sometimes I'll do this so that I can make sure that I get at least two streets of value. The river is a two of clubs. I make it 3,500, he makes the call. I show my kings and he mocks. The next interesting hand is against the same guy because he keeps opening very, very wide. I'm on the button with pocket sevens. I have about 65,000. Um, he makes it 1,300 for middle position. I again raised 4,000. The big blind also calls and he calls. So the flop with 12,900 comes king of clubs, jack of spades, three of clubs. Not a very good flop for pocket sevens, but they both checked to me. I had been playing very, very tight. And I had three bet him, so it's time for me to bet. I bet 5,100. The first guy folds. The second guy, who is the wide opener, he tanks and tanks and tanks and folds. Woo! <laughs> the last one on day one happened at 300, 600, 600 level. I am under the gun with 80,000. I have ace of spades, king of diamonds. I may get 1,500. 
Now there's a brand new player. I mean, he was still putting his stuff down and he got cards in the P1. He shoves all in for 14,300. And I have every intention of calling him until the big stack player on the button, I believe, makes it 30K. Mm. Now I kind of go in the tank. I ended up making the fold. So regardless of what happens, I think I'm happy with this fold. Uh, it turned out that the under the gun had ace-king also, and the big stack had pocket queens. The board did come ace-king, three, nine, eight. So the under the gun won. I would have split that, but that's okay. I'm very, very happy with my decision uh, at that part of the tournament. All right, end of day one at the main event, the bag 72,500. Lost kind of a big one at the end, or I'd have had near 90. But that's okay, I did fine. And it is on to day two. For all my backers, thank you guys very much. Let's get some money for everybody. All right, one more thing. I was a little harsh on the no fun in Vegas. <laughs> Between day one and day two of the main event, I had an off day. My wife was there. Uh, we hung out at Caesars. We played the horse races. We had a few drinks. We went and saw Bellagio Fountain. We saw the show at Mirage and Volcano. We just walked around, saw sights, and that actually was very, very fun. Billy was with us most of the day, and, and uh, that was a great time. That was fun. So on day two, I did not really have a very tough table to start with. Um, there was one really good player, Josh Bergman, who was also the big stack. And in this hand, I play against him. So with 70K in the big blind, I have ace of spades, king of spades. Uh, Josh had been raising quite a bit. Uh, he was the big stack on the button. He makes it 2100. I raised a 5200, but I didn't say anything. I put in a 5000 and two 100s and it's obviously a raise. I didn't say anything though. So he makes the call. The flop with 10,800 comes 973. I lead out for 3,700 and he pretty much snap calls. The turn with 18,200 is the two of diamonds. I make it 5,300 and he tanks and tanks. And he asked me, did you misclick the flop thinking maybe I meant to put in the call? And I said, no, of course not. I wouldn't do that. And he ended up folding. Uh, he had a pocket pair and he would have beat me. It's interesting how some of the really good players and pros think that <laughs> amateurs are always making a mistake. No mistake. I meant to three bet with ace king suited. All right, this next hand was kind of interesting. It's, I played against um, this hand. There was a woman who raised and then I played against her in the next hand. We'll see here in a minute. Anyhow, uh, an Asian woman in her 40s. Uh, she's under the gun. She makes it 2200. I am in the cutoff with pocket kings with 80,000. Uh, so I make a 5,200. The button then cold calls the 5,200 and the woman tanks and folds. The flop with 14,600 in the pot comes king of hearts, 10 of hearts, three of clubs. I lead out for 3,500 and they make the call. The turn with 21,600 is the seven of spades. I make it 13,000, pretty good size bet, and they fold. So that hand has a little bit of effect on this next hand, about an orbit later. I was under the gun with 78,000, I have pocket fours. I make it 2,200, and in the hijack is the woman who I had raised before, and I don't think she liked it. <laughs> she makes the call. On the flop, 6,400, comes eight of spades, eight of clubs, three of spades. I make it 2,600, she clicks it back to 5,200, and I make the call. The turn with 16,800 is the seven of diamonds. It goes check, check, interesting. The river, the two of diamonds. It goes check, check again. I show my pocket fours and she folds in disgust. I mean, she threw those cards down. She was not happy that I called the uh, click back raise with pocket fours. So I then had a table change not nearly as good a table for me. We had a lot more chips, a lot more aggression to it. I did win my first hand. <laughs> then I had this hand. Blinds were 600, 1200, 1200. Uh, I'm on the button with pocket tens with 86,000. The hijack makes it 2,500. The cutoff makes it 6,600. I tank and I fold my pocket tens, thankfully, because the hijack then behind makes it 20,000. <laughs> The other guy folded. I'm certain that I folded too. In a smaller tournament, I probably wouldn't do this, but in the big tournament like this, I just decided I'm not gonna play my pocket tens. Uh, and again, thankfully I didn't. 
All right, let's do a you be the villain hand. I am under the gun with 80,000. You are in the plus one, you have 66,000, and you have king, queen, offsuit. I make it 2,600, you make the call. The MP1 then, who's a pretty big stack uh, with 400K, he makes the call also. The flop with 11,800 comes two of spades, queen of spades, nine of diamonds. I check, you, the rock, make it 6,000, Big stack folds, and I make the call. The turn with 23,800 is the five of hearts. I check. For some reason, you make a very, very, very small bet of 7K, and I make the call. So you have about 48,000 left, and the river comes the eight of hearts. I shove all in for your effective stack. What do you do? All right, on this hand, I made a mistake. I never should have shoved all in here. I should have either checked and had you better get into me, or I should have made a much smaller bet. I had the nuts. I had uh, 10 jack for the straight. But I certainly could have had a missed flush draw there also. Although in the main event, I don't know if I would have risked all my chips with that. All right, this next hand, blinds are at uh, 800, 1600, 1600. I'm in the big blind with seven of clubs, eight of diamonds. I have 95,000 now. Uh, there's a Brazilian player in the middle position one. He has the big stack. He's probably over 300,000. He makes it 3,200. I make the call. It only cost me 1,600 to win 7,200. I'm going to make that most of the time. So on the flop, 8,800 in the pot, and it comes bingo bongo, 775. I check, he makes it 2,500. I raise it up to 5,500. Let's get the pot inflated right now, and he makes the call. The turn with 19,800 comes a five, yay. I make it 5,500, pretty darn small, and he makes the call. The river now at 30,800 is the three of diamonds. Uh, probably a mistake here, I wanted to get some value. I only bet 8,100. He made the call. I probably should have bet at least 15, 16,000. Uh, anyhow, I showed the full house. He had uh, overpair to the boards. Missed out on a little value right there. But actually this tougher table has been working out for me because now I'm up to 122K. And the goal for me at this point was 180K for the end of day two. And the last really kind of interesting or important hand of day two happened um, just before the we bagged up. I'm on the big blind. I have queen of hearts, ten of hearts. I have 121k. Uh, in the P1 is a young player who's got the big stack, 4k, and he is raising constantly. He raises it to 4,000 and I make the call. So the flop with 11,000 in the pot is ten of spades, five of diamonds, two of hearts. I check. He makes it 3,500 and I make the call with top pair. The turn with 18K is the Jack of Hearts. I check. He makes it 7,500. Ouch. I tank for a little bit, but I make the call. The River with 33,000 in the pot. It's a three of diamonds. I check. He makes it 12,500. I don't think I could fold now. I make the call, and he shows King 10. Ugh. That beats my queen 10. So I went from 121,000 down to 96,000. World Series Poker main event wrapping up day two. Disappointing in that at the end I didn't do very good and I bagged 85,100. I'll be coming back for day three with about 35 bigs. I think about half the field will make the money. So just need a little run here. WSOP main event day three against these fine folks here. All right, let go. So day three started off pretty tentatively. Everybody playing very, very carefully. Uh, I ended up stealing a couple blinds. I got it up to 105,000. I then lost a couple of regular hands where I would raise, miss the flop, they bet. I had to fold or just, you know, lose your blinds. So with blinds at 3,000, 6,000, 6,000, I have 85,000. I'm in the big blind with four of clubs, seven of clubs. Not a stellar hand, but... The chip leader in middle position one makes it 6,300. It folds all the way around to me. 
I decide to defend my blind. It's 3,300 to win 10,800. Plenty of equity to call here. So the flop with 17,100 in the pot comes 345 rainbow. I check, he bets 5,000. I make the call. The turn now has 27,100 in the pot. It's a two, not a great card because he has lots of aces. So I check, but he checks behind. The river is the jack of hearts. Uh, I'm gonna represent that I might have a straight here. Hopefully he doesn't have an ace. And I bet 9,000, he calls. He had ace queen, and so I lost a hand that, that one hurt. So the next three hands played against a guy who we got into a little bit of a war. Um, I think that he was just raising three betting very, very lightly a lot. Um, so this is what happened. I'm on the button with 65,000. I have pocket tens. It checks all the way around to me at the button. I make it 6,500. The big blind, who is this player, kind of tanks. He looks like he's going to three bet and then folds. Uh, but I know now that I think he wanted to three bet me there. Um, so I'm thinking if he three bets me again, I'll bet you it's gonna be light. And the very next hand, I get Ace of Clubs, Jack of Diamond, the cutoff with 72,500. It uh, folds to me. I make it 6,500. It comes to the small blind and he three bets to 17,000. Folds all the way back around to me. Now what do I do? I had a plan. I didn't execute the plan. I thought ace-jack was a little bit too weak. I wish that I had done something different here, but I folded. So a few hands later, I'm in middle position one with 65,000. I have pocket nines. I make it 6,500. This player who's now in the high jack makes it 17,000 again. It falls all the way back to me. This time I jam. He thinks about it, tanks, and says, mm, that's just too much, and he folds. I sure wish that I had done that on the ace-jack hand too because I think this guy was just, he was three betting so light. So I'm down to 62,000. I get pocket kings in the plus one and I make it 6,500. The chip leader who's in the cutoff makes the call. He's the only one. The flop with 20,500 comes pretty darn good. King of diamonds, king of hearts, jack of clubs. I lead out for 7,000 and he makes the call. The turn with 34,500 in the pot is the eight of hearts. Uh, now putting on a flush draw on board. I make it 15,000 and he makes the call. The river now 64,500 in the pot and I've only got 34,500 left is the 10 of spades. Kind of a scary card, but I jam it all in there. And he tanks and he tanks and he tanks. And I know that he's tanking when he's tanking here, he doesn't have a full house, he'd have called. He doesn't just have three kings, he'd have folded. I think he's tanking absolutely with ace-queen. He tanked for maybe three and a half, four minutes, eventually made the call, and I was out of the main event because he did have ace-queen for Broadway. It's easy to second guess yourself on hands where you lose, but on this one, I really don't know if I'd have played it any differently. Um, I want to get value when I flop three kings. So betting 7,000 and 20,000 on the flop I think is great. Betting 15,000 on the turn I think is very, very good. Uh, I got unfortunate on the river. But that's poker. Dang it. Dang it, that's poker. Well, unfortunately, my main event run has ended on day three, uh, level one of day three. Uh, golly so frustrating no cards today and then when i did i had ace king and the flop came king king jack and i ended up getting beat to a guy at ace queen and got the straight broadway and beat me frustrating but that's how it goes thank you so much to all the guys who backed me uh, i can't tell you how much i appreciate that i thought i played well and i thought i had a great chance to do it but sometimes cards is brutal and that was one of those days today. All right guys I hope you enjoyed that uh, going over the hands of the main event. Again sorry this is late. Uh, I'm not sure how often I'm going to be putting these vlogs out in the future. Uh, I need to have a little bit of kick in the pants for motivation. I don't know if it'll be every week, every two weeks, once a month. 
I'm not sure. We're gonna see where it goes from here. I still am planning on doing a Mr. Bill meetup game in August in Grapevine, Texas. Uh, news of that will be coming out here by the end of July, I believe. And once again, the most important thing uh, has been you guys. You guys have been just so awesome and tremendous with backing me, with supporting me, with saying kind words. You don't know how much that's appreciated. So with that, I want you guys to have a fantastic and blessed week. Remember what's important in life, and I will see you all again next time. Bye. Thank you.